In case you didn't know, now you do. That the Nigeria Football Federation is going to have elections. When? Well, information available says September. Some are saying it's going to be postponed. Who knows? But today, let's have a conversation with Ida Peter Said, as you've seen in the welcoming slide. He's a former Super Eagles goalkeeper. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure, pleasure being here. Well, we've <laughs> only always seen you, as we say on the streets, in the abroad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Well, I don't know if it, I, I think it will be remiss of me to not take your views on, you know, general sports thing. I mean, okay. you saw the one of the um, sports we usually take to the Commonwealth Games, Olympics, and all of that. What football is one of our, our greatest, you know, sales, mm. so to speak. Uh, but the, 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 what we had recently, the Commonwealth Games, of course, maybe football wasn't part of it. But hey, what's your take on the performance of our? Uh, athletes. Well, we do sour athletes or our girls. What do you mean? <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much, Mr. Peter Sad. Thank you very I'm, much. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm, I'm... You have to call it. You have to call it the way it is. But guys also play. Yeah, they, they participated. Yes, yes, they did. but the girls won the, the laurels. Girls, yes. Yes. The girls carried the, the day. Girls. Not, the, all, the, not the, only the girls won. The guys also Nigeria won. They represented Nigeria well. One bronze, one person won gold. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, one, one person. No, but it was it was beautiful to see. You know, there's something that sports does to this country. It just brings back hope and life. You know, with all the stories going around of um, insecurity and all that, and you see the girls, okay, not the girls, you see the team perform. <laughs> you, see, you, see the, you see the team perform, it gives you joy, hope, that there is hope for this country. There are people that are still committed to the cause that we can still raise our hands like we did in our time mm. uh, and say, uh, one Nigeria. Uh, that's the beauty of it all. And when we, when we look at it, no one is mentioning where the, where the medals are, which states the medals are coming from. Mm. They say Team Nigeria, Team Nigeria. That, that should be the take. And that's the beauty of sports, that sports unifies everyone, brings everyone together. And we're all excited. Again, kudos to... Kudos to the Ministry of Sports. Mm. Uh, I think the, this time, I really do think that this time we should credit the minister. You know, most times when officials <laughs> don't do uh, well, we criticize them. Mm. You know, three, two years ago, I, I, I had the minister talk about adopt a player or adopt an athlete. And I think that's paid up. Mm. Different corporations have come out to ad adopt uh, players and sponsor them and you know, push them to where they got to. Yeah. And we're seeing the results, and I think the girls deserve, or the team the, deserves our praise, and the ministry. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, they were on song on their way to Birmingham, mm -hmm. and right now, I mean, hard won victory, everyone is celebrating them and the rest of them. That's a good thing, and yes. we're happy about it. But I'm not sure we can say the same for mm -hmm. football, mm -hmm. which is your own constituency. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the fact that we haven't qualified, we didn't qualify for the World Cup, World for Cup. instance, is still, you know, biting us on people's yeah. hearts and yeah. all of that. So, exactly what you think is 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 the issue, and how does that reflect on on the whole issue of the NFF elections and all of that for you? Well, a whole lot of things are not right with our football, um, uh, and uh, with our football, really not right. I played the game from scratch, you know, I played without shoes until I got boots. Uh, we need to go back to foundation. The, the root, the, the root, the football must not be top bottom. It must be bottom top. And we've not done that. The whole emphasis on the super eagles, super eagles, super eagles will continue to bite us. Because if we don't put this top bottom, the top cannot be, cannot be well. And that's what we're doing. See what we're doing now. We're now relying on most foreign based players. Nothing wrong in our time. We had foreign big players, but we still had the players that were groomed locally. So what we're doing is that once there's an emergency, we go to the market instead of producing. But what's wrong with it? What, what, what informed that? Because it the, wasn't always like that. That's, there's an organization that runs football in this country. They're called the NFF. You must run football. It's Nigerian Football Federation. It's not Nigerian Super Eagles Federation. Or it's not Nigerian Foreign Players Federation. We must, it's football federation. Where does it start from? We must empower the state FAs. When I played, I, a young boy growing in Port Harcourt, 
We had these local teams that groomed us. We had youth teams that we could hone our skills. We started from there. And as we began to grow up, I played sports festival, two sports festivals. I won gold in 1980, I played for River State in sports festival. And it was automatic. From there, they moved me to Sharks of Port Harcourt, right? In 1992, 93, I was invited to the Super Eagles. Now look at, look at the growth. That's what we must do. We must come back to the grassroots. You know, and if we don't do that, we will keep struggling. How how will that play out in 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 this you know in this election? Are you contesting? Yes, I, I want to be the president of the NFF. I don't want. I have to be, for changes to come. I just what's what's uh, going to be different? It will be. Look look at the ideas I have. You see, be before you begin to talk about the ideas, mm -hmm. yesterday we talked about funding for sports, you know, yeah. on the program. And I recall our guest talking about, you know, the National Sports Industry Fund that is being considered. You know, but the NFF has access to uh, some FIFA grant, but the talk, the commentary about this has, over the years has been the mismanagement of this fund and uh, how, you know, uh, um, the footballers do not get adequate welfare and we see it in the pictures that come from, you know, their complaints from championships and all of that. How will this be a major factor in this election? And to ask that directly, if you became the next president, how would you address this? We, we need to look at it critically. Everything is built on trust. You, you expect corporate bodies to, to come and sponsor. Yes. Now, ask this question. We, how long were we on television? Television is big market. How long were we, have we been on television? Our, our league has not been on television for years. The question is, why? People must trust you to invest. If you give me 10 million, you need to come back and say, um, what did you do with the money? You don't even need to come back to say, you need to see what I've done with the money. What, what has been done with our television money? What has been done with the money? I know it's enormous. I know the responsibilities are huge. Trust me. You know, I, I, when I decided to, to, to contest, a whole lot of people in-house called me say you don't know what you're getting into. You know, there's no money here, there's no money. I said, no, the problem is that there's no money here. The problem is that there's no trust here. If there's trust, the money will come. And if the money comes, we must be accountable. There's no money. The, the, the figure is $4.1 million in grants. From, 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 from FIFA. From FIFA. And, the and there's no money? Now we're saying, what, what do we do with the, again, I say it's enormous. When we say uh, a whole massive money is coming in, what you spend it on, spend it on, it's uncountable. But the truth about it is that if your books are right, if you plan properly, then you will spend the money judiciously. That's what we're saying. There's no need for jamboree. The other day I was, I was um, um, talking to someone and they said, Ah, you know, you have to fly all the FA members. You have to fly. I said, they're Zoom. It cuts off the expenditures of buying tickets, putting them in a hotel, and then giving anyone stipends. You have to be, you have to be wise on how you, you spend the money. I will bring changes. It will be painful, but it will come. And it will show because you, you can't... You can't uh, take a walk if people are not following you. If you can't lead, if people are not following you, it means you're taking a walk. We must look back again. If we give the state FAs money, we tell them, don't come to Abuja, let Abuja come to you. Which means we'll give you money to run your state FAs, enough money from sponsors. Let's have a school sports. Let's have a President's Cup where you can groom these players and all the teams are able to gather from them and bring them in and raise. We will do well. I just have this thing. I, like I know that I know mm. that we can get it right. We've not been to the last, in the last eight years of this administration, football administration, we didn't go to two Nations Cup. You know, the last Nations Cup we stopped at quarterfinals and we did not go to the World Cup. Yes, we were in Russia, but Nigeria is huge. We are leaders in Africa. We must lead. We were coming in, somebody saw, saw us at the airport and said this to us. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are ashamed of Nigeria. He said, South Africa, and I say, why? He said, you are not leading us. We want you to lead us. We'll look up to you. Okay. Let's lead you to Abuja. <laughs> <laughs> Chamberlain. 
<laughs> you know, it, uh, it, it was interesting when I heard you say, I, I don't want to be, I have to be the president of NFF. But you know, for what we've seen uh, in other sectors, sometimes the best people don't always get elected, they don't win elections, and you know, people find themselves grappling with things. You've talked about some of the challenges or expectations of persons who were there say you had to fly them in, and that's what many of them expect. But what kind of encouragement, what do you see playing out? Because many of them will want to have cronies, people who they think they can do certain things with. And so if they don't see you as such, they may not you know, pan towards you, even if you happen to be the best candidate, as it were. So are you considering that and so how do you plan to approach that I, I, i'm a stakeholder in this game i'm a stakeholder so if they have friends i have friends you know we're in the system just that we don't run it we have we have, I have a lot of support people have come out to show support to me or support for me massive 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 but a whole lot of times they're asking how do we vote can we vote the question is no you can't vote there are delegates that will vote. And it's an opportunity for me to talk to them. You know, we, we hear people saying, you must come from the north. Is the time for the southeast? Is the time for the southwest? We're talking sports. We're talking football. We're talking about running the game. It's not where you come from. Where you come from, who is a crony, does not matter. We need the best hands. Look at our football. I just beg on them. Look at our football. Can't we bring changes? And it will benefit everybody. We will come back to the state uh, uh, FA chairman. We will give them money. Like I said, we must give them money. Because if you don't give them money, how do they survive? How do they run the games in the state? So don't put somebody there that you say he's your brother, or he's from, he's from the north, he's from the east, he's from the south. And when he gets in there, we continue in the same system. It shouldn't be so. We must develop, if, if, right. if we're in Katsina, we must develop Katsina. We must develop football in Zaria, in, in Meduguri, in, in, in Makodi. It, it must spread. And the only way we can spread it is not for, to let the people come to Abuja, is to let Abuja come to them. We'll give them money to make sure they go back to the grassroots and develop football from the grassroots. Okay, so we, it's an election, you know, and uh, you expect um, people to, right. some to want you, some not to want you, but we, we, uh, we are appealing that this is bigger than where you come from, whom you know, who supports you. It is football. Let's bring back Nigerian football to where it has to be, that the man in Kano, the man in Port Harcourt, okay, and the man now, in Uwere will be happy. All right, let, let, let me just jump in, pardon me. Um, now, there are reports, Vanguard Inclusive, reporting that the Secretary General uh, of NFF has written to FIFA asking that the election, which was scheduled to hold next month, be moved to January. And in that report, they say that uh, the NFF president, Amadou Peniksa, is influential people. They want him to continue as president. What do you know about that? Well, you just asked two questions, the movement of the election and the Amadou story. <laughs> the election has to hold. It is in the status. It has to hold. Anything outside the 21st or the 30th of September is illegality. And no, they don't have that uh, power to take that decision. That decision must be taken by the board, okay? Or even the Congress must take that decision to decide to move it. The Congress sits on Tuesday by good authority. It sits on Tuesday in Yanagua and let that decision be made. And once that decision will be made, then it's collective that is a body that runs football that took that decision, not two or three people that have taken the decision. The next one on uh, Pini Kamaju running. I am not Pini Kamaju, but I want to say this authoritatively. I say it again, authoritatively. Pinik told me, me, that he would not run. F twice I called him. He said, either I will not run. The second time, he says, I will not run. If he says he will not run, he has to be a man of honor. 
and say, I will, he's a big boy now, he's with the big boys. You know, we'll stop, let him be with the big boys. If Pinnick doesn't run Nigerian football, Nigerian football will continue. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not all about Pinnick, it's about our game. But like I said, authoritatively, he said to me, he will not run. So all of a, then I know there's a vacancy. He's told the world. He says men are putting him under pressure. That's what we read. Okay, just tell those that are putting you under pressure that you're a man of your word, you will not run. Jonathan was put under pressure to run. Which office is bigger than the office of the president of Nigeria? He was a man of honor and he stepped aside. Nigerian football can move on without Amadou Pinik. And as long as Amadou Pinik remains there, we all support him. If he wants to be FIFA president and he has an opportunity to be FIFA president, we will support him to be FIFA president. Because if he's up there, he but, benefits but either, us. Do, do you? Yeah. Do you think that he has a chance if he decides to be CAF president? Why not? Why not? Everyone has a chance to dream. It's like asking me, do I have a chance to be NFL president? I do have a chance. And he's done well in, uh, in CAF and in FIFA. He's well known there. Let him, we wish him well there. But, but here now, there's vacancy. Okay. There's, there's Even space. though some believe that uh, he hasn't quite done well with Nigerian uh, football now, you know, in the last two terms that he has served, you still think that he has a chance with uh, CAF? As CAF president. Well, CAF is not Nigeria football. Maybe he's doing very well there. You know, it's politics they play there. All right? But here, yeah, we play football. So here, the, 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 Amaju, he should look at himself and ask himself in eight years, okay. what have I done? What, what, I think he, he has to decide that for himself. We're wrapping up now, but what you, you spoke about your place, your, your, the, your time at Sharks of Port Harcourt. Yes. And we have so many such uh, clubs owned by states, owned by people in different states, um, uh, Benway, ICC Shooting Stars, uh, Water Corporation of Ibadan, Stationary Stores of Lagos, uh, you name it, all over, Kapwara United, you yes. name it, all over the nation. Uh, is there a strategy in your head or somewhere around to bring these back so that the local league can be stronger because without that, I don't know how the plan that you're talking about. Maybe not work. the names. I know you are still. But I'm just. I'm just still connected I, to some yes. of this old school. <laughs> <laughs> the same way you are connected <laughs> to Sharks of Port Harcourt. I am connected. I was so angry when uh, it was disbanded oh because the other day I was talking to my child. I said I played for Sharks. The Sharks what? You know, all my efforts just gone down the drain. You know, but where we move on? If you don't bring money, you don't run the league. We have to give the clubs money. If you give the clubs money, they won't go back to government. If you give them club money to run football individually, government will be, will just push them away gradually because now they'll, they'll be self-sufficient to run the league. And once we do that, then we can control the league. We can bring back discipline to the league and we can tell the referees you have to get it right, the stadiums will be right, the playing toughs will be right, because he who pays the tate, the tone, will give you money, and you account for this money, and you run games, uh, your club Let, Let's hope your vision becomes tangible. As a, a very quick one before we wrap up, um, and as a follow-up to Chamberlain's first question, the 37 uh, FA chairmen yeah. have been included, in, and this was done some decades back um, in the elective Congress. And some have said, oh, they are the monster created by the Federal Ministry of yes. Sports to ensure who becomes the NFF president. Mm -hmm. um, how would that affect significantly the participation of those who are gain, going against the establishment in this election? And should you become president, would you be seeking an amendment to yeah. their participation we're, we're in future elections? We're trying to amend the status already. You remember the government wrote to the NFF to make some arrange, uh, uh, adjustment, yes. but only the Congress can do that. But I am so determined to bring changes. One of the first things I would do, one of the first things, the term of the president will be two terms only. So that all the stories that uh, God told me and God told me not to run, friends told me not to run, will be over. First term, if you are re-elected, the second term, finish and clear. That's how we say it there. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? There will be beautiful laws that will help the game 
and it can be static. We will let the people own their games and we will make sure a whole lot of footballers are suffering. You have not spoken to the 37... Um, no, no, but we're saying, we're saying to the others, I've been... You want me to appeal to them? <laughs> <laughs> Please vote This for is me. your chance. You must, you must, you, I must say, you have to vote for me if you want to get it right. And you will enjoy it. You know, everyone will benefit. We're not just coming to staff for people. You will benefit. We will uh, give you money. Absolutely. I say it again. State FAs will have enough money to run to football run. in their state. What is cheering for me in all of this is if these things work, who we'll have less employed young people yes. because a sizable number of them who play football, you know, the way you played when you were younger, yeah. they'll mm -hmm. probably get something. If we get football right in this country. So it's big business. Absolutely. We will get it right. Absolutely. And Aya will get his local league. Yeah, we'll, yes, uh, please. We'll, we'll give him a card yes. at least he can get him to the stadium free. Thank you very much yes. for that. <laughs> Ida Peter Side, former Super Eagles goalkeeper, thank you so much for your time and all the best at the NFF elections. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Your own messages, your contribution to the program today will begin with this one by Suleiman who says the carbon emission tracker drone is a good development that can be used to man our borders and ungoverned spaces. Deployment of technology and artificial intelligence for surveillance is the best strategy to adopt by Nigerian security agencies in crime prevention. And Pastor Law Alpha Cross is next. He's also talking about security. He says the Nigerian security agencies, particularly the army, have recorded some lofty successes in their fight against ter terrorism recently. Let the trajectory continue unabated, fueled by the support from both governments and the general public. Nigeria shall be great again. Uh, amen to that. Chamberlain? Well, Faisus Akimbo Yawasa is the Governor's Forum and FG must work together to protect public money. The Attorney General must not have a lenient approach that will encourage consultants to claim this huge amount of public money that can be used by states to clear salary arrears and pensions. It's a very, very, very interesting one that you raised there, Chamberlain, especially when you look at the front page of one of the papers, as we said this morning, that 12 states are owing salaries of workers. That kind of money will do some good. Amaya Makinde, have a wonderful rest of your day and a beautiful weekend. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Thank you very much for watching and have a beautiful weekend ahead. And I am Chamberlain, so goodbye.